Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today's Alex and Answers segment is all about fuel economy. This is a 2014 Fiat 500 Pop, and you can expect the full review on this car coming up soon, but that's not what this video is directly about. This is about fuel economy, because while I've had this car, I've had a bunch of people come up to me and say, my God, that's a cute small car. What does it get, like 60 miles to the gallon? The answer, of course, is no. It's about 34 miles per gallon on average. That's on the 2008 EPA cycle. This then follows with a statement from these same people saying, my God, what gives? My Geo Metro from 1990 got me 55 miles per gallon. Why is this only getting 34 miles per gallon? Well, there are a lot of reasons for that. Let's first address that 55 mile per gallon claim from the 1990 Geo Metro. It was only on one particular Geo Metro model. It was the Geo Metro XFI, and it was rated for an average of 55 miles per gallon on the old EPA cycle. When you actually measure that on the brand new EPA cycle, according to the EPA, it should drop down to about 46 or 47 miles per gallon on average. Now that is still higher than this Fiat 500. Now the Geo Metro comparison isn't quite as crazy as you might think because the Fiat 500 has about the same amount of room on the inside as that 1990 Geo Metro. They both seat four and the Fiat 500 actually has a little bit more rear seat legroom than that Geo Metro did, even though this is about uh, 10 inches or so shorter than the Geo Metro. Most of that shortness is actually right up here in the hood because the hood on the Geo Metro was a little bit longer than the Fiat 500 and the uh, Metro also had a more of a real bumper in the back. But overall, they have about the same amount of interior room, so they do seem like a valid comparison. Although there are many reasons for the difference in fuel economy between the Metro and the 500, there are two big ones. The first is weight. The Geo Metro weighed just over 1,600 pounds, which is incredibly light, and this weighs over 2,300 pounds. That's more than an 800 pound difference. It's about a 50% difference between the Metro and this Fiat 500. There's a huge reason for that. There's an entire laundry list of safety and convenience features that you find on this 500 that just were not available on the Metro. There are a lot to list, so I'm gonna read them off to you. Airbags, crush beams in the doors, we have power windows, power door locks, we have electronic brake assistance, cruise control, we have a tilt telescope and steering column, power pressure monitoring, a chip computer, air conditioning, CD player, we have six speakers, we have a USB interface, speaker phone, we have a moonroof, we have automatic headlights, we have daytime running lamps, we have alloy wheels, we have a defogger, a rear windshield wiper, we have an alarm system, we also have keyless entry. And all those things add weight, but these are all things that modern car buyers don't want to live without. A huge difference in weight comes down to the safety systems in these brand new cars. In addition to the airbags, we have an awful lot more steel and an awful lot more structure going on in the 500 than we did in that Geo Metro. That's why the Geo Metro scored very badly in all of its tests. If you actually look at the IHS accident statistics for the Geo Metro, it fares among the worst in terms of actual accident statistics. It's number three or so. And the only things that are worse were some truly awful contraptions back there in the 80s and the early 90s. Whereas the Fiat 500 scores good or above of average in most tests with the exception of the new IHS small offset where it did get poor but other than that almost all the other crash test statistics for the Fiat 500 are very very good. The next thing is the engine. This car uses a four-cylinder engine. The Geo Metro used a three-cylinder engine. Now, in general, the fewer number of cylinders, the more efficient the engine is. But also, that Geo Metro was an awful lot less powerful. It produced 45 horsepower, whereas this car produces about 100 horsepower or so out of its 1.4-liter engine. That's a pretty big difference in performance. The weight difference and the engine account for the vast majority of the fuel economy difference between this and the Geo Metro. The Metro also had crazy narrow tires. They really looked more like bicycle tires than real tires. In contrast, this Fiat 500 handles extremely well. It has all the modern convenience and safety features you expect out of a real car, except that it doesn't get as good a fuel economy as that ultra lightweight claptrap Geo Metro from 1990. Well, that's obviously kind of an extreme example. There are things you can do with your own car to maximize your fuel economy on your commute. Make sure your engine is well maintained. Whether you maintain your engine yourself or whether you have someone else do it, a well maintained engine can improve fuel economy by 5 to 10%. You want to make sure that your fuel filters, your air filters, etc. are all nice and clean, and that in general everything going on under the hood is exactly as it should be. 